What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a really exciting project. Well, it's not much of a project. The E-Flight Erratics 3D Flat Foam 860 millimeter. If you're into 3D flying or if you're just into flat foam, this is setting the new bar in ease and convenience. And in this video, we're gonna be putting it together. And of course, I'll follow up with another video on some flights when the snow melts. First off, I just want to give a shout out to E-Flight for this incredible packaging job. Comes in a really small box, guys, but look how beautifully packaged this comes. All safe and sound inside the box. This was shipped to my door, but guys, let's get right to it. Open up that manual and check it on out. All right, guys, I got it all laid out on the table. As you can see, not many parts to this build. We got our three bags of hardware. We've got our push rods, control horns, propellers, side force generators, landing gear. And of course, I'm on page one of the manual. And in this first step, we're gonna be sliding in the horizontal stabilizer into the back of the aircraft. The rudder is already installed, uh, but we're gonna be installing this and mounting it with the M2 by 10 machine screw. So let's get right to that now. Okay guys, so easiest way to identify the first two screws that you need to use, that's gonna be the two M2 by 10 screws. Now, if you don't know or you don't have a micrometer to check these out, these are the longest machine screws that you get and they come in one little package and there's two little screws. So we'll set those aside for right now. Then go ahead and grab your horizontal stab and you wanna make sure that this horn is on the top side. Of course, red and the bottom side's gray. Uh, and you're gonna to wanna to slide it through this section right here. Now, one thing I noted as I was trying to piece this together before I made the video is you're gonna have find a point where you may need to help this uh, carbon stab, stab part to feed through. So just get it to that plastic and just kind of punch it through and be careful because you can mar up this foam really easily. So just keep pushing, keep sliding. It's gonna have a little pressure until you get past this point and you can leave it out. You're gonna eventually seat it into this point right here, uh, but you can get it through quite easily. And this piece of plastic here, it's actually going to slide. You'll notice there's a small uh, notch. Let's see if you can see that. There's a little notch right here and that notch lines up with this channel right in here. You'll see them two come together. So we're gonna slide the stab all the way towards the front of the airplane. And now we're gonna slowly start to push this together. And you'll see how that seats together really nicely. Keep pushing through. Again, push straight, push level. Don't bend here. And you're just gonna line it up so that this hole and the hole on the horizontal stab line up together. Once you get it to that point, grab your M2 by 10 screw Throw it on your screwdriver. It helps if you have a magnetic screwdriver. I don't. And we're gonna go ahead and put that in there and just go ahead and screw this down. <clears throat> All right, well, there we have it, guys. Really simple to put that together. Again, screw on that side, screw on this side. We've got our floppy elevator here, and we're gonna go ahead and connect the horn. And it says to use the top hole on the horn itself. You'll see a top hole and a bottom hole. You're gonna to wanna to connect this to that top hole. So easiest thing to do is line it up and just spread it a little bit with the horn. And you'll find that that pin just kind of drops into that top hole. Click it together with your fingers by squeezing it here. And then of course slide this small bit of uh, tubing over it to capture it. I'll get a little bit of a close up there. Slide that up and get that tubing to capture it. And now, you have a mounted elevator. The next thing we're gonna do, guys, is mount our landing gear. And those come mostly pre-assembled, which is really nice. They come just like this out of the box. So you'll see all that bits and pieces bolted together there. And all we need to do is go ahead and slide them into their mounts. And you'll notice right here on the front, there is a hole there and a hole here. And you're gonna wanna take this and line it up and you want to make sure that your of course landing gear is in line with the aircraft you can install it wrong like that of course that won't fly very well or, or land very well so you just want to make sure that that lines up nicely go ahead and slide him up into his spot go ahead and grab your next landing gear and the same thing make sure it's tilted to the right direction and go ahead and slide that and you'll see here as i do this one it's actually through this slot and up into this slot up here and we'll just slide that to fit 
and you're gonna wanna work it and just so it gets all the way up there and is a nice tight fit. And you'll see this one I didn't quite finish as I need to just kind of work it into that spot. And uh, sometimes these are a little finicky, but you just gotta work it until you get some pressure on it without pushing too, too hard and get that to line up. Now I'm gonna have to see this off camera, see why I'm having a little trouble there. Looks like the angle is just not perfect on my side. I think that's user error and not E-Flight's fault, but we'll see. All right, give me one second. Yep, totally my fault. I just didn't have enough grip on the airplane. So you're gonna wanna put a little bit of pressure down here and then just slowly push this rod into place. It'll click into place here. And again, I did the same thing on this side. Um, I just couldn't grasp it right on camera. So you're just gonna wanna put pressure right there and push both of those in. So now we have an airplane on landing here. Awesome. Okay guys, it's time to install the wing. First, you're gonna grab your wing spar. It's a square tube, looks just like this guy. And you're gonna go ahead and run it through this right here. Now, some guys like to install it into the wing first. The manual says put it in the fuselage, but the wing hole is right here, this small square. It's not this section down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just install that into the wing, even though the manual says to put it in the fuse. And the reason I like to do it this way is just because you can control the depth right on the wing. You get it to seat all the way. You don't need to push super hard, but you'll find that it hits a wall. And then you can take the whole wing assembly and line it up with your fuse. And then you can slowly feed it and work it together so that it's all one piece and bada bing we're good so that's in now it says to mount it using two of the m two by eight and this is the machine screw so it's going to be this guy here it's going to have the little fatter head on it um, it's the shorter of the machine screws it also comes in a bag with four machine screws and again we're going to mount one right here and one right here All right, so we're on to side force generators. One thing I'd like to call out is the larger side force generators are labeled, one for right and one for left. You'll notice the smaller side force generators, you can see here, much smaller. These guys are not labeled. Of course, the gray is the bottom side of the aircraft or the, and the red is the top side. And also note the smaller side force generator is gonna go on the outer position and the um, larger one is gonna go on the inner position. And I'm working on the left wing panel right now. So of course we're gonna grab the left side force generator. And of course it's gonna face this way. Now there is a pocket on top of the wing. Let me move the camera here. There is a pocket on top of the wing that that slit slides into. So it's gonna slide over here and pocket right into that. So I'll try to get this set up so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. And again, taking our left side force generator, we're going to just spread it ever so gently. You want to build a little bit of a gap in there and get that bottom one to spread out just a little bit. Be very careful here so you don't damage your wing or damage your side force generator. And just keep that pressure applied until they slot in to the wing. And you're going to want to go all the way back. And you can tell it's all the way back because there's no gap right here. And that right there, my friends, is mounted. Now, the other one is also pretty simple. Again, red on the top, gray on the bottom. Give it a little bit of a flex. Slide it into place here. Again, give it a little bit of a flex. I'm doing this on camera is interesting. Slide the top up, get the bottom down. Ooh, I spread that a little far, that's okay. And pop it right into place. Now, if you go too much, like I just did, you may end up giving a little bit of a rash <laughs> to your side force generator, but it will ultimately be on the airplane just fine. So there we go, guys. Both side force generators mounted to the aircraft. I may need to flex with this one just a little bit to get him a little straighter. It looks like it may have bent in shipping or maybe just didn't get cut perfectly, but otherwise that is pretty solid. Now you can come back and probably do a little tack with some foam safe CA or if you really wanna be fancy and put double-sided tape in there. But honestly, guys, you shouldn't have to. There's not a lot of force here. These are just a little bit of aerodynamic force for doing some knife edge work. So you really don't have to do a whole lot there. Okay, up next is mounting your uh, clevises, your, your uh, push rods to the aircraft itself. Now, uh, this is also in the wing step. I know I jumped ahead to the side force generators, but I wanted to start kind of doing the whole thing. So go ahead and grab these guys. You're also gonna note that there are um, larger ones here 
but we won't need those just yet. Okay, so we take our Z-Bend uh, push rods and we're going to put them on the outer hole of the servo. Now it says um, to do that, obviously you wanna get maximum throw and let me just move this like this. This right here is your aileron servo. It's kind of got a funky uh, horn on it, but this outer, outer hole is where you're gonna wanna take your Z-Bend Pull this closer to the camera so you guys can see it. And you're going to want to feed that Z-Bend right into the outer hole. And it may take a little twist or so to fit that in. And it will pop right in just like it did there. And you want to rotate that Z-Bend down. And now you've got that connected. And as we come back to the wing, it says to connect it to the outer hole of the clevis. So really simple. Outer hole of the aileron and outer hole of the clevis or the horn of the wing. So we're gonna come back here and go ahead and do the same thing we did on the tail. Get that pin in place, give it a little pinch. It's gonna pinch together and then slide your tube over that. Okay, so, and I mentioned these larger push rods before. Um, these are actually optional. Now, E-Flight says they're optional if you're going to use this for more aggressive flying. Um, you don't need them if you're just gonna, you know, putter around and you can save a little bit of weight, although I'm sure this is just a few grams, or if you're running the larger battery. So honestly, guys, just go ahead and install these. These are wing struts um, and they're quite simple to install. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for those of you that want to install them on your aircraft. Okay, so on the bottom of your erratics, there is optional wing strut mounts. You're gonna wanna have your M two by eight. These are the self tapping. You'll notice the threads are coarse. So you're gonna use the self tapping screws and your mount or your, um, your push rod is actually gonna mount right up here and right down here. Now E-Flight says to select the second hole in uh, on the wing itself. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and select that inner second hole right down here. Let me turn the camera and I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. Kind of hard to see, but you can tell there's one, two. So we're gonna go to the second one. And your screw is actually gonna go through uh, the, not this side, but this side. So start from over here and screw into that. That's kind of your nut on there. Um, so again, we're gonna mount that to the second hole. And we're also going to mount it straight to the fuselage. Now on the fuselage itself, um, it's just a singular spot. I apologize for moving the camera so much here, but it's just a single spot there. So go ahead and bolt it up there and bolt it down here. Repeat on both sides and you'll have that stuff done. guys well I've got both of my wing struts mounted I will say if you find that the struts aren't lining up perfectly you can kind of flex the wing and get it in place but if it's really far off uh, especially down here where you have to hit a specific hole you do need to adjust these in and out but out of the factory I found mine were pretty perfect the other way you can check is if you put them on <laughs> and you happen to look at your airplane and one of the wings is really torqued up for some reason um, which mine does not appear to be. It's pretty straight. I'm even using the camera's grid on my side. It's dead nuts. Um, but if you see one wing is kind of up and the other one's kind of flat or level, um, you'll need to adjust those struts so that you're not torquing the wing in any specific way. All right, last but certainly not least, and of course I'm not gonna go through radio programming in this video because, well, you may have a different radio than I do, but this is the Bind and Fly. I'm gonna be using my Spectrum, likely my iX14 uh, for this, but anyway, your mileage may vary. Now in the manual, it says that you have to go ahead and mount this collet, and in fact, you do not. Um, I will say though, you will want to check if these are thread locked in on your model. If they're not, or they're just loosely put in there, mine feels very tight, um, so that's good to know. You just wanna check that. These are what hold your propeller on ultimately, and if they back out, well, that rubber band that holds your prop on is gonna go off with it, and there goes your prop, and guess what? You're not flying anymore. So just make sure that those are set. Your motors are gonna be already mounted, even though the manual talks about the motor service and how to change that, but we don't need to worry about that for our first flight. Now, the propeller that it comes with is this nine by 4.5, 4.6 
Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that those numbers are on the outside of the aircraft. If you put it on like this, you're gonna go backwards. <laughs> so numbers on the outside, go ahead and slide your prop on. And the hardest thing here, just kidding, is adding this little rubber band. Now the reason they do rubber bands with models like this is because oftentimes if you do hit the ground, it's better to blow the rubber band up than it is to blow off the motor off the front of the airplane. So once you kind of get the rubber band on one side, it's a little bit of a stretch, honestly, but stretch that band as hard as you can. And now we are all set. I like to also just kind of tuck it down on the threads there. And uh, I am all set. You also want to make sure your motor, your prop is kind of centered here. You don't want this riding on one way or the other. But as you can see, and if I tilt the airplane up, I am all the way back on my propeller and I'm seated. And it does have a little bit of a flex there, of course, for the rubber band, um, but I am ready to rock. All right, there we have it. The brand new E-Flight Erratix flat foam all set up and ready for flight. Of course, I will go through and do trimming and making sure it's all set up when I do the radio programming. But guys, look at that. That thing's a stunner. Good looking airplane. I cannot wait until it's not snowing and 10 degrees outside to give this thing a whirl. I wish we had some more indoor events. Who needs more indoor events? Put it in the comments below if you guys want to see some more indoor events. I know I do. But guys, super excited about this one. Thanks for tuning in. Been a while since I made a video. I've been uh, doing a different YouTube channel, my Smoking Meats channel, where I do lots of barbecue, another hobby of mine. But uh, really excited to get back into flying this winter with something like this in the backyard. So super cool. I will be running uh, the E-Flight uh, recommended batteries. I do have the smaller battery and the larger battery. So when I do that video, guys, I'll talk all about that. Show you where I put my battery for CG and we'll get to it. But until then, keep them flying, guys. And we'll see you on the next one.